Finally, after years of waiting, that cyber channel is proud to announce one of its most requested creations. Prepare yourself for Cyber the Hedgehog OC. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of that Cyber Channel. I'm Dan Cyber and today I think we're going to be taking on one of the most difficult tasks I've had to do to date. Today we're attempting to accomplish the insane task of creating a perfect 3D Sonic game. About a month ago, I rebooted FNAF and I asked you guys what franchise I should reboot next and well, you guys made it very clear what I should reboot next. Keep those suggestions coming in the comments down below and if you're on the way down, you see a little red button, that is the subscribe button and you should hit that. And that's because we're giving away three Sonic Humble Bundles for this video. That's right, it's giveaway time, baby! All you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment down below with a suggestion in the hashtag gotta go fast giveaway. I'll be picking three random comments for a Sonic Humble Bundle for Steam. And that's important, for Steam only. So, keep those suggestions coming. Sonic has had a rocky existence. For every Sonic Mania generation for colors, there's a Sonic 06 forces or a hot steaming pile of boom boom. Despite all that, I really love myself a good Sonic game. One of my favorite earliest memories was going over to my friend Peter's house to play Sonic. We never beat it, but you know, we're like five. So let's take an analytical look at the franchise and see if we can help Sega find the pieces to help them more consistently make a good Sonic game. Let's first build our foundation in which we're going to build on. Just as our FNAF reboot, we'll be looking specifically at presentation, story, and gameplay. Let's start with presentation. Sonic's presentation has been all over the place, but it wasn't always that way. Sonic 1 through 3 had very consistent presentation, but Sonic Adventure series took a sharp turn to the edge. For the people of this planet, I promise you. Revenge! Oh Shadow, how much 13 year old pain and angst you embody. But recently the best Sonic games always had a consistent presentation. Bright, colorful, and a cartoon style. I don't really like that term, but it's the best way to explain it. Games like Sonic Mania and Colors fit in this well. But when games like Sonic 06 creep in with realistic environments, we approach that first Sonic movie design. Still makes me sick! So let's make our building block colorful, bright, and stylized. While we're at it, let's add in modern Sonic. I mean, we're making a 3D Sonic after all. Next is story, and I don't want to get too deep into this now because it's going to be a whole thing later on. But I think this is the simplest foundation to set up. <clears throat> Sonic fights Eggman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Stop. You you're so kind. Oh, a streamy? I what? Oh. A Golden Globe Emmy? Oh, come on, guys. An Oscar? Wow. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of hard work went into this. So, yeah, not really groundbreaking writing here, but this is about setting a foundation here. Sonic fights Eggman. That's it. Now, gameplay seems like an easy one as well. On the surface, it's gotta go fast! Sonic has always been about going fast. Basically, every single game is about trying to make Sonic faster. Just ignore the uh, werehog and the entirety of Lost World. But at its core, it's not just that. When you remove all the gimmicks, Sonic is a platformer. It's all about navigating through a series of platforms trying to get to an end goal much like his mustachioed rival. The major difference between Mario and Sonic is that Sonic's platforming is speed-based. With all that, here's where we lie. When it comes to presentation, we want a modern Sonic with a more colorful, cartoony world. The story is Sonic fighting Eggman, classic. And then finally, gameplay is a speed-based platformer. Now with that, it's time to get into the nitty-gritty. Future Dan, let's r Wait, too fast, I wasn't ready. I Let's kick this entire process off with presentation, since I think it's where Sonic needs the least work despite its inconsistency. Most recent Sonic games have solid presentation. Recent Sonic games have solid presentation! <sighs> Alright, fine, not every Sonic has great presentation. Matter of fact, presentation has been all over the place since Sonic Adventure. I think the idea of bringing Sonic into our world, a more realistic setting, really ended up hurting the presentation as it became edgy. 
Since then, 3D Sonics have been a mixed bag from fun and colorful to edgy rebellion. But let's take a look at Sonic Mania, pretty much widely agreed to be one of the best Sonic games of late. While it does mostly reuse zones from previous Sonic, there were a couple of new zones. One of my favorite being Studioopolis. I love the aesthetic of the stage and it feels right at home in a Sonic game. Now maybe I'm feeling a little nostalgic for the Genesis era, but this look and feel we see in Mania feels closer at home than say, Sonic Forces. It's a more unique look that matches an anthropomorphic blue hedgehog running around at the speed of sound. Got blazes to go, gotta follow my rainbow! Mm. Excuse me. That's the point I'm trying to get at. We can't put Sonic in these realistic settings and situations like we see in Sonic 06 and Sonic Forces. It's weird to hear Knuckles talk about war. None of this is good, Vector. That's why it's called war. We need to be in settings that feel more stylized, like we see in Mania and Sonic Colors, this sort of Sonic style. We need more games that look like this. Drop the critters, Eggman! And much less of this. Oh God, censor it, censor it, demonetize it. I don't, demonetize the entire video. So our next block is to keep the world in the Sonic aesthetic. Finally in presentation, let's talk about music. Basically, not a whole lot of notes here. Recent Sonics have had great stage music, but I think there's something we need to discuss on this point. We need at least one Crush 40 anthem. Since Sonic Adventure 1, Crush 40 has been a staple to the series, though they haven't really contributed music since Sonic and the Black Knight, and I don't quite blame them for stopping after that game. Regardless, they've had one of the biggest impacts on the games and the fan base. And honestly, if we could bring back Crush 40, I would freaking love it. Sure, to a degree, I enjoy fist bump and endless possibility, but nothing can replace Crush 40. I mean, live and learn, best Sonic theme, hands down, don't at me. Is everyone okay? We are thanks to you. Cutting you kind of close though, pal. Well, yeah, that's pretty much how I roll. When I asked you guys what aspect of the game needed the most reworking, you guys were heavily in favor of the story. I think the problem is summed up by Anna's center best. Sonic needs better story, not some edgy hedgehogs with edgy names or details that confuse us. Ennis is absolutely right, and I'm sorry if I totally said your name wrong, which I, I'm pretty sure I did. Sonic has always had an attitude problem, all the way back in the Genesis era too. However, Sonic Adventure slowly moved the series into the sort of cartoonish edginess. I just don't know anything anymore. It's so... edgy. This all came to a head with Shadow the Hedgehog, the ultimate edginess of edgelords. Which I mean, was a game that could be described as, um, what's the best way to put it for the current environment of YouTube? Um, it's f***ing sh Just some edgy sh And there's our three swears of the show to prove that the content isn't for kids. Thanks, Kappa! Up until Sonic Forces that kinda added the edginess back in, the Sonic series has gotten a little lighter and far more simpler. So as much as I'd like to leave the story at Sonic Fights Eggman, Sonic clearly wants to tell a more in-depth story than his cap-flinging rival. So let's help them build the right story for the blue blur. Starting with probably the best Sonic story, Sonic Lost World. I know. I know, how dare I bring up the game where you don't even get to go fast. But the thing is, this game still has some of the best storytelling out of the entire franchise. Looking at all the other Sonic stories, they generally come off as fairly cheesy or trying way too hard to be edgy. Basically, yay friendship! Or why do I even exist? But Lost World managed to do things that no other Sonic has done, have actual emotional moments in the series and consequences. Throughout Lost World, we see Sonic and Tails fight, sacrifices made by friends and foes, and Sonic see all of his friends die. I mean, heavy air quotes on that, but the emotion is still there. Even more so, we actually see Sonic's character flaw of acting before thinking have consequences. Matt Stone and Trey Parker, creators of South Park, write the show using a therefore and but method. The idea that good stories are written like this happens, therefore this happens, but this happens, so therefore this happens a more in-depth way to say choices have consequences. Most games like Mario and Sonic have stories that line up more like this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and so on and so forth. When stories written like this, the plot, well, to quote Crush 40, 
But that's all different in Lost World. Just a few examples, Sonic kicks the Concha away, therefore the Zeddy are free. Sonic tries to open an animal pod, but Tails figures out it's a trap, therefore Tails sacrifices himself to save Sonic. Consequences for the actions that push the plot along other than things happen because video game. So while we're building out our story, we want to have consequences for our actions. On top of that, I'd love to see more character flaws that push the story like we see Sonic acting without thinking. Then finally, there is one more thing I think we should absolutely take from Sonic Adventure, the final chapter. I loved finishing the hero and dark stories to find there was one last final chapter revealing the true villain, then ending the whole thing off with an epic battle as Super Sonic. I would love to again see this in Sonic, where getting all the Chaos Emeralds results in one last epic stage. The final chapter in itself is like a completionist reward. So let's add that one last block to our story. Just a small little gift for Gerard when he gets through yet another Sonic game. Look, the man needs a win, especially after completing Sonic in the Black Knight. And it's here at Gameplay where I have to admit defeat. I've been fairly confident writing this script up until this point. However, when it comes to gameplay, I'm not sure I can possibly come up with something that doesn't upset half the fan base. But here at that Cyber Channel, we do it anyway! Well, I think all of us have ideal forms of gameplay. I do think after playing a ton of Sonic and analyzing what works and what doesn't, I have an idea of the best gameplay to satisfy most everyone. I'm sure you guys in the comments will sort through the rest. Be civil. While in the poll from before, the gameplay came up a second, I do think that gameplay is the thing that needs the most help here. Whether it be the odd choices that slow down the game like the Werehog, or just glitchy stages, 3D Sonic games have had a hard time being consistent. Let's start off by killing the mechanic I see most people complaining about, boost mechanics. Boost mechanics, while I initially thought was great, ended up being a major hindrance on the franchise. Boosting always ended up making the game feel linear and pretty dull despite the speed factor. It makes quick reactions a pain and more often than not punishes you majorly for misusing it in the slightest. So let's make sure this is in our foundation or I guess I guess not in our foundation. So in our anti-foundation I guess. The point is no more boosting. Boosting? That's no good. But let's start rebuilding this beast. One thing I want to start with is something that Sonic insists on shoving into its games. Sonic's friends. Don't get me wrong, I love me some Knuckles and Knuckles. But when it comes to 3D Sonic, his friends are mostly used to shake up the gameplay. It's just, more often than not, they slow the game to a crawl. I'm looking at you, Big. Hello? Big? Big? Is... Is he dead? I mean, I mean, I mean he doesn't look I'm good. Oh, Jesus! Ever since Sonic Adventure, Sonic always attempted to include some other form of gameplay besides GOTTA GO FAST! Sometimes it's things like the Werehog, still upset about that. 30 minutes. 30 minutes to beat a level in a Sonic game! However, more often than not, it's playing as different Sonic characters. But as I mentioned, it slows down the game most of the time. A game that, mind you, is about going fast. So if Sonic Team really wants to have other gameplay mechanics, but you can't slow down the game, what do you do? Sonic Mania. You Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania Plus has five different playable characters, each with unique abilities. However, it doesn't change the core gameplay of Gotta Go Fast! Instead, it changes the way you can achieve faster times, such as flying to faster routes, gliding over tricky platforming, or taking out enemies safer and quicker. It's this gameplay variation that needs to come into the modern Sonic timeline. Instead of making completely different levels with different mechanics, the friends could play through the same stages, but they have abilities that make getting through this stage completely different. Take a look at Project Hero. It's a great example of how Sonic's friends can function this way without having to build completely different mechanics. It's the reason that Generations did so well having modern and classic Sonic. Two different ways of play, but each with the goal of going speed. So let's add that to our foundation. Friends with unique abilities that still maintain that foundation of speed. This brings us to our next block, and what I think is easily the most important one, level design. Level design is hugely important in Sonic, more so than most games. When a Sonic game does great level design, like Sonic Mania, the game is amazing. When it does an okay job, the game plummets faster than glitching through a loop in Emerald Bay. Besides making levels that, you know, 
function, Sonic needs large branching levels. Not only is one of Sonic's biggest appeals the ability to find secret paths or riding the fastest route, Sonic's whole speed system is dependent on it. You see, the different routes aren't just part of the level, they also function almost like a health bar. Yes, sure you have rings to protect you from hits, but routes save you from bad reactions or missed platforming challenges. Games like Mario give you time to tackle each new obstacle. Most of the time, you can stop and plan out your moves, meaning when you fail, it's your own fault and you lose a life. Sonic doesn't give you that time. Since you're going so fast, chances are you'll manage to miss time a jump or flat out miss a chance to take a faster route. In which case, instead of losing a life as your punishment, you just end up on a slightly slower path. In order for this to work though, we need large overlapping stages that weave between each other. So let's add in large branching stages onto our foundation. Which leads us to my final block in our gameplay that builds off this idea of slower routes being a punishment. If failure results in slower paths, then inversely, success means speed. This was my shower moment for this video. You know, when you're standing in the shower contemplating why waking up is so hard when suddenly, BAM! Inspiration hits you. Or the bottle of shampoo drops on your foot. It's, it's one or the other. See, ultimately, we look at Sonic the wrong way. We expect speed to be the main mechanic, but in reality, speed is the reward. Look at every great Sonic that comes out. There are moments where you happen on tricky platforming sections that require precision over speed. On the surface, it just seems like the game comes to a halt. That is, until you nail the timing of every jump, homing attack, and wisp usage. It is the most satisfying thing about Sonic, and the result is speeding on through to the next section. Chemical Plant Zone, from basically every single appearance of the zone, is a perfect example of this. In Act 1, if you manage to time your jumps perfectly while racing at top speeds, you can avoid going into this purple death trap altogether. I swear, this section was the bane of my existence when I was younger. The point is though, when you platform well, Sonic gets to go fast. It's why I'm so confident in removing the boost system. The boost system is just going fast when Sonic needs to be fast, precise, and fluid. Going back to a speed similar to the days of adventure would allow us to react more effectively and be more precise with our actions. It again just points out how important the level design in Sonic is. The stages need to be built where reaction time and precision results in speed, which puts our final block onto our foundation. Speed as a reward. And with that, our perfect Sonic game is complete. Our presentation is colorful and stylized with modern Sonic, it stays way the heck out of realistic worlds, and Crush 40 returns with an epic butt rock anthem. Our story keeps it simple with Sonic finding Eggman with actual emotion tied to what's happening. On top of that, instead of using and then this happens, we use the therefore and but method of storytelling. Finally, our game is a platformer built for speed. We have playable friends with different abilities, but still maintain the same core speed mechanic. Our stages are large and branching, where failure results not in death, but a slower route. And finally, speed is a reward when we platform well. While I say this is our perfect Sonic, I realize that's the wrong wording. This is more of an ideal base for future Sonic games. In the end, Sonic games are fundamentally very difficult to make. When you rely on speed being your main draw, being detailed or nuanced really isn't in the cards. But I do think what we got here truly shows that a great 3D Sonic game is possible. So, what do you guys think? What would make the perfect Sonic game for you? Do you love boost mechanics or would you rather have Sonic boom forever? The three of you. Leave that and don't forget to enter the hashtag gotta go fast giveaway by leaving a suggestion for a franchise you think you should reboot next. Also, a quick shout out to Numskull Design for sending these tubs. They are literally cosplaying rubber duckies, and I ducking love them. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go check how well Cyber the Hedgehog is doing on Instagram. Why does no one love me? Thank you everyone for watching, and a special thanks to Elizabeth Crazy and Elizabeth Mello and all my Patreon patrons. If you're still here, you must have loved the video, so slam that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you ring the bell and turn on notification for future videos, and until next time, Cybered out.